I'm single at the moment and I'd like to talk about the last boyfriend I had. Let's call him Sam. I met Sam at a friend's party about 3 months ago. I was a wreck at the time due to a bad breakup I went through about a month before that. It's not what you think, the boyfriend before Sam was a great guy. His name's Jamie and he really was the best boyfriend one could ask for. But for whatever reason, I got bored of him and dumped him. That's why I was a wreck. It took me no more than 2 weeks to realize the mistake that I had made, but Jamie refused to get back together. With that being said, I'll be honest, Sam was a rebound. It was a period in my life when I felt ugly and miserable. The fact that he liked me so much really helped to boost my self-esteem. I did use him and I can't deny that. But yeah, we began seeing each other after the party and officially became a couple within two weeks. Sam was wonderful at first. He knew I had come out of a bad breakup not long ago and was very understanding of my moodiness. I could talk to him about my mistakes, regrets, and that was the problem. I treated him more like a best friend than a boyfriend. He was bound to get offended with all the stories I told him of Jamie. The truth is, I think I actually enjoyed seeing him get jealous. About a month into our relationship, Sam began to change. I no longer spoke to him about Jamie and I showed him more respect, but the damage had been done. Sam became possessive of me. He would always come over after work and stopped hanging out with his friends. He basically wanted to be with me day and night. I enjoyed that attention for a while, that is until it became an obsession and I ended up being trapped in an unhealthy relationship. Here's how the real bad sequence of events unfolded. After about a couple of weeks of Sam coming over to my place every single day, I sat him down and told him that I needed to be alone from time to time. He was visibly upset when I told him that, but it did seem like he knew where I was coming from. He didn't come over to my place for the next few days and I thought maybe this could work. Then a couple of days thereafter, I saw an Instagram post made by Jamie, my ex-boyfriend before Sam. He wrote about some bad things that were happening to him and the accompanying photos to show the damages. Apparently, his car's tires had been slashed by someone and his mailbox had been smashed as well. Well, that's awful I thought, but then when you live in a city, those things are bound to happen and sometimes you get caught right in the middle of it. Another day goes and I just sort of forget about the whole thing. Sam stopped calling for the next few days. So I called his friend to check on him and he told me that he and Sam were no longer friends. He said something about getting punched by Sam and told me to stop dating a psycho. My feelings about the whole thing was just whatever. That was his side of the story and I had never seen Sam become violent. At any rate, it must have been about a week after that and Sam still wasn't answering my calls. As far as I could tell, the relationship was over. It's not the first time I've dated a guy who disappeared from the face of the earth like that. One night, as I was walking home from work, I saw a large fire in front of my apartment. As I got closer, it became clear to me that it was my car that was burning. I could hear the siren of fire trucks not too far from me. Someone had already called the emergency services. Anyway, the fire was put out soon after and the ensuing investigation concluded that my car had been set on fire with the use of an accelerant. I think it was around that time that I began to suspect Sam for all the bad things that were happening around me. It wasn't only Jamie who got vandalized. My best friend had her bedroom window shattered when someone threw a rock through her window. Also my brother had his bicycle stolen a few days back. It wasn't a cheap one either. It's one of those bicycles that cost thousands. So naturally, with the timing of the breakup and all the bad things were happening to me and the people around me, they just didn't seem like coincidences. Anyhow, sometime after that, so that would make it about a month prior from now, I had been visited at home by a couple of police detectives. They told me that Jamie had been assaulted by Sam and that he was currently hospitalized in critical condition. 
Apparently, Sam walked into the hair salon Jamie works as a hairdresser. He had a hammer hidden inside the deep pocket of his coat. He approached Jamie while he was busy tending to a customer and pounded at Jamie's head multiple times from behind. Sam ran away after he was convinced that Jamie was dead. But thankfully, Jamie survived the ordeal and Sam was arrested only a few hours thereafter. Currently, Sam is looking at a minimum 20-year sentence. At least, that's what I've been told so far. As for Jamie, there's no good news there aside from him surviving the attack. Jamie's got vision problems, which the doctors say will persist for the rest of his life. Even more tragic is the muscle spasms he has to live with for the foreseeable future. Yeah, that means he no longer can work as a hairdresser. He used to work for an ultra-high-end hair salon. Only the ones with special talents work at those places. He's lost all of that because he dated the wrong girl at the wrong time. That's not to say that I blame myself for the actions of Sam. But I am saying that I take some responsibility in creating that monster. I could have just used him as a rebound without ever bringing up Jamie, but I did. In a way, I put suggestions into the brain of a madman. Sam was like a walking gas can just waiting to be lit up by someone and they really wanted to be blown up to pieces. It's terrifying to think that there are people who look completely normal on the outside, but in reality, they're walking right on the edge of insanity inside their heads. That's what Sam was, and I brought him into my life which ended up hurting innocent bystanders because of my selfish need for a rebound boyfriend.